Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus and check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4 as well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video, another trade style video today and that is going to be around LaShawn McCoy. It's no secret that the Bills aren't going to be doing anything this year. They've struggled heavily under a rookie quarterback that hasn't been able to stay healthy and then dealing with arguably the worst starting quarterback in NFL history being Nathan Peterman before now finally going to Derek Anderson was the last winning season quarterback for the Browns though fun fact about Derek Anderson uh otherwise he hasn't played football in like two seasons but he's now the starting quarterback for the Bills they're two and five at the bottom of the AFC East the inverse record of the Patriots not even that close to the Dolphins if we're being honest and they are struggling to pass the Jets so they are not in the best shape right now as I record this they have lost their last two as they head into their next game I can only assume it's going to be a third loss in a row they have the Patriots on the 29th which is awesome Monday Night Football action Patriots Bills I'll be watching that one for sure uh let's bring back not you yeah, not now nah, I, I probably will watch it I'm not gonna lie I, I just I watch some football but yeah they'll likely be two and six and there's no point to have a stud running back in LaShawn McCoy there's no point so you might as well trade him before the deadline while there still is a trade value to him now he is a 30 year old running back just turned 30 but he's had a pretty good season last year four yards per carry not incredible behind a somewhat questionable offensive line and in 2016 at 28 years old 5.4 yards per carry that's phenomenal absolutely insane 4.4 the year before and then this year uh in six games he's about 3.9 but he's still a good caliber running back can catch out of the backfield can do a lot of different things for you he's a good caliber starting running back there are a lot of teams who could use him let's go ahead and talk about five Number five for me is going to be the Baltimore Ravens. I really don't see this happening, but if I had to choose five, I wouldn't be entirely shocked if the Ravens were out to go uh, and get a new running back. They do have two somewhat okay running back options. Alex Collins and, of course, Javorius Buck Allen. Alex Collins is not good, right? He averages 3.5 yards per carry. He is a starting running back in Baltimore there are better options out there. I think LaShawn McCoy certainly would be one of them. Buck Allen is averaging 2.6 yards per carry, albeit in limited attempts because he's bad. He's really just that goal line guy, it seems, but he doesn't really get into the end zone for touchdowns. He doesn't really do anything particularly well. The Ravens could really use a better running back in the backfield to open up that offense. I know you go out, you get a ton of new receivers. John Brown is new. Willie Sneed is new. Michael Crabtree is new. You, I don't know, bring in eight new tight ends a year with uh, now Mark Andrews and Hayden Hurst. And I don't know, you had Ben Watson a couple years ago and Crockett Gilmore who moved to tackle and then got cut. And I don't know, Ozzie Newsom could come down from being the general manager to which I guess he isn't anymore. I think last year was his last season or maybe this year is, I think it was last year. He could play tight end for you. He's a Hall of Fame tight end with the Browns. Why not, right? A number of reasons why not, but we're not going to start with that. The Ravens need to do something to get that running game going. Flacco's having a great season, an elite season. I don't think he's an elite quarterback, but he's having a great season. And I think that a star running back could really open up that offense even more. LaShawn McCoy definitely still has it. He's running behind a terrible offensive line where he is far and away the clear number one option get him into that offense where maybe you don't know it's going to be a run every single play i like what shady can do why not go to the ravens number four is going to be the oakland raiders this is an interesting one for me i again i'm not really sure about the exact likelihood of this but the raiders do need a running back i don't think marshawn lynch is it but then again the raiders aren't exactly in a win now mode they're in a lose now mode. Gruden is fully aware of this. Unless he wants LaShawn McCoy to have him for the next couple of seasons to put off actually drafting a running back or signing a running back, if you can get LaShawn McCoy for a low pick 
it would entirely be worth it, especially considering the Oakland Raiders have so much draft capital at the top of the draft. They have three first round picks now. You have so many picks up near the top. You don't need to be taking any of those on a running back. Trade a low draft pick if you can for LaShawn McCoy. Have him as your option for a year or two. I, I don't think it's the worst thing. But uh, we'll move on now to the three teams that I think are actually likely to go out and trade for LaShawn McCoy. Number three is the Green Bay Packers. I think this is where it starts to get very, very likely that a team would come in and try to get the services of LaShawn McCoy. The Green Bay Packers are what I would consider a disaster at the running back position. And I know what some of you Packers fans might be thinking. Oh, it's not a disaster. We have Aaron Jones. We have, you know, running back options. Jamal Williams, Ty Montgomery. Well, Ty Montgomery is a receiver playing running back. He's not your number one option. Jamal Williams is not what I consider a particularly good player. Again, a guy that averages below four yards per carry. And I know Shady is averaging 3.9 this season. It's an outlier. It's the lowest of his entire career. I'm not going to take stock in that when he's the only possible way that the Bills would have an offense. I don't care about that whatsoever. When you look at Aaron Jones, who is that number one running back, he is averaging a pretty good number of yards per carry. Fantastic at 5.9. Only has one touchdown. Also, only has 32 attempts. It's such a low number of attempts per week because he can't be given the football. He's not someone that is consistent enough for you to give him the football. And the Packers don't run the football because they don't have that number one option. I think if you bring in a Shady McCoy into that system in Green Bay where everyone thrives, you give Aaron Rodgers a target out of the backfield, someone to actually hand the ball off to, this offense could do unbelievable things. If Aaron Rodgers can make, can make Marquez Valdez-Scantling look good, apparently Devontae Adams is a top five receiver to Packers fans. So a lot of that is probably on the back of Aaron Rodgers. I would not agree with that, by the way. And then, you know, Randall Cobb looks like a stud. Jimmy Graham is back to looking pretty good. Imagine what that offense could do with the addition of LaShawn McCoy. I think, why not? You have the draft capital again to get it done. Go out, get LaShawn McCoy, make a Super Bowl run. I know they're 3-2-1 and one right now. This is a Super Bowl caliber team. Whether I think they're going to go to the Super Bowl or not is a different question. But this team with Aaron Rodgers could certainly make a push. One of the most potent attacks in the NFL anytime Aaron Rodgers is your quarterback. I think they could uh, definitely, definitely make use of Aaron Rodgers when they have the 20th ranked rushing attack in the NFL based on yards per game. Um, get LaShawn McCoy. Maybe up that a bit. Number two is the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are a bit of a disaster. And they're another team that's certainly not going to be able to win this year. I say certainly, but I mean, their record isn't exactly terrible. Now, it's not its not where they want it to be, I'm sure. They are 2-5. and five. We've talked about some other 2-5 and five teams. But when you're talking about the AFC South, where the top team has four wins at 4-3, and three, and they started off the season 0-3, a team that started 0-3 now leads the division after just seven games? The Titans have lost three in a row. The Jaguars have lost three in a row. This division is wide open, and if the Colts start making a run, if they win three in a row, they're at one right now. If they're looking at five and five, where does that put you in the division? You could be one game out. You could be two games out. You could very well be tied for the division lead if you just win your next two games, next three games. That's how crazy this division can be right now, and the Colts have nothing going for them. And I know what you're, you're saying. Oh, Marlon Mack's pretty good. And Marlon Mack is not pretty good. He's not. He's okay. He's a situational back at best. Naheem Hines, a rookie? Okay. He's a decent player, power back style. But you don't really have much going. Again, this is the 22nd ranked rushing attack in the NFL. You don't have the ability to run the ball because you don't have the personnel. Marlon Mack, I like him. I like him as a second 
running back in a system. Naheem Hines, maybe as a rotational guy, maybe as your power back inside the red zone, inside the, you know, the five, on the goal line, whatever. LaShawn McCoy, again, as you could say with any of these teams, opens up this offense, gives them a running back to lean on, and it's going to be some help that Andrew Luck has not seen in a while. Frank Gore on the Colts was nothing. Frank Gore on the Colts was not good. Frank Gore on the Dolphins seems to be pretty good again, but he's old. You need some help. LaShawn McCoy, I know another older running back, just turned 30. He's still a good player. Bring him into Indianapolis. Maybe make a playoff push. You could win this division. I know they have five losses right now. They could still win the division at 9-7. and seven. It is insane to think that they could, but they could. It's so doable. They have a bunch of division matches coming up. They've only played one game in the AFC South so far. Inter-divisional play. If you run the table in the division, it is, you're automatically in the playoffs. If you split games in the division, you're still probably going to make the playoffs. That's how close this is. It's going to be wild to see, uh, but we'll definitely have to uh, see how it goes down the stretch. Colts are not a good team, but maybe LaShawn McCoy makes them a bit better. I'm not sure. Number one is going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't think this is exactly a shock here. The Bucs are an absolute disaster. You take one look at their depth chart, and you can tell how big of a disaster they are. Running back number one, Peyton Barber. Blech. Running back number two, Jaquiz Rogers. He's been a good running back three his entire career. You don't want him any higher than three. And then you have Rojo at three, who has done absolutely nothing. He's done absolutely nothing. 17 carries over the course of the season. Um, with most of those coming in week four against the Bears where he had 10. He averaged 2.9 per carry. Against the Falcons the next week, one attempt, three yards. Against the Browns in week seven, six attempts, 13 yards. Averaged 2.2 on the ground. His long was nine. Take a look at that for consistency. You take away that nine-yard run, that is five rushes for four yards. Really? Is that what you want in a running back to be your potential future? I like Rojo. Doesn't have it right now. Does not have it right now. Out of the backfield, he's not really a potent attack at this moment. And then Peyton Barber. Peyton Barber should be starting for exactly zero NFL teams. He is not good. He is not consistent. And he should not be starting for the Cleveland Browns. It is an absolute disaster that he is starting. He's averaging 3.5 yards per carry this year. Terrible. Jaquiz Rogers, I don't even know why we'd stop to make a point of talking about him, but he's not the option. He's 5'6". That's crazy to think about. <laughs> like he's only 5'6". I'm sure a lot of you guys in middle school, high school, you guys probably have some good size on Jaquiz. I mean, I'm about 6'3". I would tower over him. He's got a little weight on me, probably. He's, a, he's built like a Mack truck. He's not good either. Jaquiz Rogers is averaging 1.7 yards per carry this season. Granted, only on 12 attempts, but 12 for 21 yards is not exactly where you want it to be. Shady McCoy is a good option. The Bucks are another team that somehow are in the playoff push for whatever reason. They're not actually that bad, and they do have some weapons. They have a great offense led by... I mean, I don't even know who you could say it's led by. It's not Fitzmagic anymore. It's not Jameis Winston's not exactly leading this team. But they won their last game over the Browns. Huge win, obviously. But you have Chris Godwin. You have Mike Evans. You have some good receiving targets. Deshaun Jackson, O.J. Howard, Cameron Braid. This is a pretty good offense. You had a decent offensive line like DeMar Dodson, like Ali Marpet, uh, like Ryan Jensen. Just need a running back. You're a LaShawn McCoy away from maybe making a playoff push. The Saints are 5-1, having a great season. Panthers, 4-2. They've narrowly escaped defeat over the Giants, over the uh, the Cowboys, excuse me, over the Eagles. I'm not sure if they played the Cowboys yet. The Broncos, excuse me, not the Broncos. The Bucks are 3-3. Three three. They are so close 
to being able to win this division, maybe, maybe even making a wild card play. I don't think they're going to win the division with the Saints, probably winning 12 or 13. But this Buccaneers team could sneak into a wild card spot. Maybe LaShawn McCoy gets you there, helps you put up some more points. Points help you win more games. That's my analysis. Let me know what you guys think. I've talked for a while, and I am done talking. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.